Welcome everyone. We'll go ahead and get started. Uh, so today we are covering uh, information about uh, or perspective Q&A uh, for anyone who's a perspective student wanting to learn more about UH Manoa. So just got some kind of housekeeping, uh, just some housekeeping information, so a few reminders is uh, we are going to be webinar style today. So you all can see us, however, we cannot see you. Uh, so just keep that in mind, of course. Uh, you guys are going to see at the bottom of your screen is a button that says Q&A. If you guys have any questions either now or throughout the presentation, definitely be sure to go ahead and use that resource. Uh, please do not put anything in the chat. Uh, we are just going to be using the chat to be able to post links. So that way you can reference back to everything later on. Just so you all know, uh, we are going to be recording this presentation here today, and it will be on our YouTube channel later on. We'll send you all a, an email afterwards with a link to be able to view that. So if you don't catch everything at once at this moment, please do not worry. We will make sure to get that to you and just a little bit afterwards. Just to formally introduce ourselves, uh, my name is Amber Owens. I'm one of the admissions counselors here at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. I'm also excited that we have Moto joining us as well. I'll let him go ahead and introduce himself. Hello, everybody. Thank you for making the time to participate in our webinar this afternoon. Uh, my name is Moto Tumita, and I'm the regional director for international recruitment. So I take care of all the overseas international applicants. Good to be with you today. Thanks. Wonderful. Thank you, Moto. And then I'm super excited because we actually have two current students joining us as well today to be able to give you the student aspect side of things. So I'll go ahead and hand it off to Leigh. <laughs> Aloha everyone, my name is Leah Aloha and I am actually currently a sophomore majoring in philosophy and I'm so excited to have you guys here in our webinar today. All right, Michaela, I'll go ahead and pass it off to you. Aloha everybody, my name is Michaela Marie, but you guys can call me Eminem like the candy, not the rapper. I'm a senior now at UH Manoa studying Pacific Island Studies with a minor in philosophy. So yeah. Wonderful, thank you all. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and kick off with just some, um, some more information about UH Manoa, just cover some general overview, and then we'll go ahead and get into uh, get the Q&A portion. So definitely go ahead and feel free to keep putting those questions in the Q&A box, and we will make sure to get to uh, them at the end. So just touching a little bit based on about our campus, we are located on the island of Oahu. As you guys can tell from my background, it is definitely quite the large campus. We are about 320 acres. We have just around 18,000 students with most of our students coming from in-state uh, with 66%. And we do have over 105 different countries represented. Thanks, Moto, we appreciate you. <laughs> uh, so definitely you can meet people from all across the world. Uh, we are considered to be the sixth most diverse campus in the US, or in the US so we're very proud of that. And we definitely have very small class sizes that can really, really kind of depend uh, I know some of your beginning classes could start off much larger, where then it could go a little bit smaller. So, Michaelin, what would you say, and Leigh, what would you guys say is your largest class size you've had so far, and then your smallest class size you've had so far? I was like, Leigh, you can go ahead and kick it off. <laughs> um, well, actually, so far, I've only had small classes. I haven't actually had a big lecture hall filled with uh, around like 200 students. I hear some of my classmates have around 200 students. Um, but my class sizes have been around like 35 students at most so far. Nice, wonderful. What about you, Michaelin? I will say I have had some lecture classes. Those are those original gen ed classes you take like your first two years. So for my botany class and then for my math 100 class, we had around like maybe 200 plus students. But with those lecture classes, we actually have this cool thing called recitation classes, which we have like a once weekly class where it's just us and like maybe 20, 30 other students with a TA so we can go over everything that we've learned in class. So it becomes less intimidating to ask questions and everything. So it's really nice to have. 
That is wonderful. Thanks, guys. Uh, so if you guys are, that gives you guys a little bit more of an insight on the different sizes of classes. I know our professors are extremely friendly, so please never be intimidated. Uh, feel free to ask them questions. They're a lot friendlier than I feel like the mainland folks, but you, you, that's a personal opinion. <laughs> Um, we also do offer over a hundred different majors here at Manoa. So anything from marine biology, which of course is extremely popular and what we are known for to Asian American studies, I was going to say, or Asian Pacific studies <laughs> represent for McKaylin. And then you can study like pre-law, like Lei Aloha, and then, or you can do engineering or computer science. There's really such a variety of different majors you can choose. The greatest news is that none of our majors are impacted except for, with the exception of nursing and dental hygiene. Everything else, you pretty much just apply for the university and as long as you get accepted to the university. And if some may have extra prereqs, but other than that, you'll be good to go for your admissions wise. Uh, speaking of that, with everything, if you wanna change your major later on, if you're you know, starting off and then you're like, wait, Never mind. I don't. I don't want to do this. Or if you're thinking now, if you applied in fall and you want to change it now, you absolutely can. You'll just want to email our admissions office uh, to go ahead and uh, just go ahead and email us before the start of the school year. Usually, we tell students that they need to let us know by April uh, if they're an incoming student. And if you're a prospective student, uh, really just yeah, anytime before April, really. And then anytime after that April, you'll just have to go ahead and change it with your major advisor in the fall. So no stress, you can still change it. You're just gonna have to wait a few months. So we know you guys really have been interested in learning more about student life. And that is a great reason why we have McKaylin and uh, Leigh here to be able to share with you a little bit more about their experiences. So Leigh, do you mind explaining a little bit more about the different things students can do on campus? For sure. So there are a lot of opportunities on campus for students to get involved. Um, we have a lot of clubs and they really range from academic to cultural to just fun, quirky ones. Um, for example, we have the Katipuna Club. So it's kind of like a Filipino heritage cultural club. Uh, we also are an example of our fun, quirky ones would be like a Nicki Minaj fan club or, or a sandwich making club. And I heard that they made sandwiches and gave it out to the homeless. So that's really cool. Um, or if you can't seem to find a club that suits you, you could always start your own club. So that's really easy to do. And as for our Warrior Rec Center, I really want to say for our prospective students to really make use of that. Um, freshman 15 is a real thing. Uh, they also hold a lot of classes or they're also free because they're included into your tuition. So they have, I believe, some dance classes and yoga classes. And yeah, just really make use of the resources on campus. Um, I also wanna uh, mention that we have a lot of tutoring resources as well. We have them in our Sinclair Library and we have a writing center. So again, you could just show up and for something as small as checking your grammar or have them look at your essays. Really helpful. Perfect. Thanks so much, Leigh. Appreciate it. Yeah, there's definitely so much to do on campus. I know people always talk about like island fever and such. I know, Leigh, you're from here originally, so you're kind of like, uh, there's so much to do naturally. And then McKeelan, I know you moved here from California, but you've been really all over the world, really. <laughs> um, so I was gonna say McKeelan, for you personally, have you ever felt island uh, fever here, especially with campus? I know COVID naturally changes things a bit, but in a pre-COVID world, um, have you ever felt that? Um, I personally have not felt the island fever because I do make it a goal of mine to constantly go out and try new things like do hikes or go to different beaches or even like go to the different islands. So, so far I've been able to go to Kauai and it was a super fun experience with the most beautiful views that I've ever wanted to see. So if you ever feel like you're feeling a little trapped, I, you, there's tons of places you can go. It's around like, I think maybe cheapest $200 to get to like Japan if you like look rightly. And so it's often cheaper to go to different places than back to the United States. So it's really cool just like to look around from places from UH, so yeah. Yeah, perfect, thanks so much. And I was gonna say one of my favorite things, obviously we can't right now in a COVID world, unfortunately, but I personally love athletics. I love being part of a division one uh, athletic school. 
I know a lot of people go to the games. There's a lot of school spirit. Uh, so Michaela, I know you've definitely had those experiences as well. So do you mind sharing a little bit more about either your favorite game or favorite souvenir you took home or favorite moment? <laughs> Definitely. So we definitely have a lot of spirit, especially for men's volleyball. So after COVID is over, and if you guys do come here, I suggest you go to our men's volleyball games. I've gotten so many cool things, like really nice t-shirts and like some dish rags and everything. I've gotten like UH merch just for free by going to sports games. You also can keep track of the games you go to and it has like an award-based system. So the amount of games you go, you can get like a really cool thing, like a TV or a um, variety of different electronics. I think they also had like AirPods on there as long as you keep going to those games and they're all free for students to go to. Um, so I highly suggest doing that. You can also meet a lot of cool people and you can learn our like chants from the band. Um, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, so so great. I can't wait till we'll be able to fully return. I know sports are playing right now, but until we'll be able to physically watch it live, that'll be really nice again. Uh, wonderful. Uh, so some other experiences you guys can definitely have. We have like our international uh, program. So we have our study abroad program as well as our Manoa International Exchange program. Obviously, this is in a pre and post COVID world, but you can have the opportunity to really study all over the world if you want to. Plenty of opportunities for that. And for our local Hawaii students, you guys have the opportunity to do uh, the Manoa International Exchange where you can do a semester or a year program on the continental US. So if you're wanting to go out of state for school, but then, you know, pay in-state rate, you know, local Hawaii in-state rate instead of the out-of-state rate on the mainland, which is very expensive. Um, that's a great opportunity for you. And then also for the students wanting to go study abroad, uh, we definitely try to keep it around the same uh, rate as your tuition here at Manoa. So definitely keep that in mind. There are some countries naturally that can be more expensive. I know usually the European countries can be a little more, but then sometimes countries like Japan or South Korea can even be a little cheaper just depending on the currency rates during that time. So we also know that live, having somewhere to live on campus is super important. You can get a great education, you can have a lot of fun, but you need somewhere to rest your head at night. So McKinlin, do you mind sharing a little bit more about your student experience on campus? I highly suggest to anyone who's interested in coming to this university to spend at least your first year in student housing because that's where you're going to form a lot of those long last relation long last French long lasting friendships. Sorry, I apologize. Sometimes words are hard for me. Um, and also you can meet a lot of cool people and go to different events. I made it also a goal of mine to go as many events as I could. So I've gone to things like a silent disco um, to several like music concerts that were like free for students. They had a lot of local artists come down here. And so we got to listen to free music. Um, we also had um, like different art making events. We've also made like candles and different like aromatherapy things. So it's a lot of cool, um, fun experiences that you can have at campus. So yeah, I highly suggest doing it. Um, it was a lot of fun. Nice, wonderful, thanks so much. So just so everyone knows, uh, housing, uh, living on campus is not required. It's just recommended. Uh, so the most important thing is that uh, you'll go ahead and submit your application by May 1st of your senior year or you know spring semester of your transfer year. Either way, we do have housing for incoming freshmen, incoming transfers, and you can live on campus for all four years, no years. Really, it is completely up to you. On the screen, you guys will see are those four circular towers. That is going to be our Holly Aloha towers or our freshman towers. You'll also see for your hall kind of in the back and that is going to be for our transfers or upperclassmen, sophomore through seniors. Uh, that's what it has been in the past this year with COVID. It was slightly modified, but that will give you guys a better idea about that. Uh, those who are, are the accepted students, uh, just so you guys know, uh, they're, they're saying that the housing application uh, could be posted as early as next week, but it'll be for sure posted time in February. So just keep an eye out for that. So we'll talk more about that later, of course. And besides, of course, just student housing, it's also important to think about how you're going to be getting around campus or how you're going to get around the island. There is definitely a lot of ways to get around the island. I know personally, um, 
I shipped a car uh, from California. It costed $1,500. It was very expensive. Don't do that, please, students. I don't recommend it. It was a nightmare of a situation. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to Leigh, who can let you know all the different ways you can get around the island without a car. For sure. So I really want to stress and emphasize how important your student IDs are because they will literally get you on the bus for free. You can just show your ID to the bus driver and hop on. Uh, basically, we have the city bus, which takes you anywhere on the island. Um, we also have the Rainbow Shuttle, which is the shuttle on campus. It takes you um, from student housing to anywhere on campus and sometimes neighborhoods a mile off campus. Um, our campus is also skateboard friendly. So if you have a class from the other side of the campus, you could just skateboard It's fast if it's faster for you. Um, a lot of students also uh, have mopeds. Um, what else? Oh, the important thing about the Rainbow Shuttle and the City Bus, they have an app that you can download and the app includes the real-time GPS for the buses and it also tells you what time the bus would be arriving. So that's really helpful to have if you're planning on taking the City Bus or the Rainbow Shuttle. Wonderful, thanks Leigh. Yeah, definitely so many different ways to get around. I know it's not on this list, but also Biki Bike as well. Uh, if you like bike share programs, uh, that's really popular, super cheap. It's like 13 bucks a month for students, uh, not through the university, but I do personally use it, so I'm biased. <laughs> now, if you guys are like us, we love food. It's one of our favorite topics every single time. We could go on for an hour just about food, but we'll try and keep it short today. So. Uh, we have a lot of different food options all on campus. We have meal plans available for those living in the residence halls, as well as for those who are commuting to campus. It's available for everyone. Uh, we do have plenty of great food places on campus, as you can see. This is just a short list. This isn't even all of the options on campus. If you guys have any dietary restrictions, they can definitely work around that too. So do not worry. Uh, so for, every, for the four of us, I'm gonna go quickly and just go ahead and say what your favorite food place on campus is. So Moto, I'll go ahead and kick it off and then Lay. Okay, uh, it's gonna have to be Dunkin' Donuts for me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I like the spot because their smoothies and acai bowls are the best. Good choice. <laughs> what about you, Mikaelin? I love Bale. They have pho and macarons and paninis. It's just amazing. <laughs> I would say my personal favorite, I'd have to go with Lei or uh, one of my other favorites is the LNL. Uh, so those folks who are coming from the mainland, LNL is of course a thing, at least on the West Coast, as far as I know, but they definitely offer way more options locally here. It is, and it's like 10 times better. I can't even and it's cheaper too. It's just all around good. So I'm biased, but that's my personal favorite. <laughs> um, we're going to go ahead and transition into a little bit more about our admissions requirements. So I'm going to go ahead and hand it off to Moto to explain more about that process. Thank you very much, Amber. Um, first of all, um, it is very convenient for all of you to apply to the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Uh, we are online uh, for the fall 2021 application. It is uh, currently live. So all you have to do is uh, Google UH Manoa admissions and the screen will come up. Um, midway on the first page, you will see different categorizations, um, whether it's transfer, uh, freshman, uh, international um, or other. So um, please go ahead and make sure that um, you do start filling out the right application. Um, if you're not able to fill out the application all in one sitting, um, it will save up to that point and you'll be able to refer back to it at a later time. The priority deadline has already passed, but um, do not sweat it, my friends. Um, the final deadline is March 1. And for those of you that are interested in FAFSA, which stands for the uh, free application for financial aid, we do have about 73, 74% of our entire student body receiving financial aid. So um, we 
have the funds and for some of them, we can't find enough students to give out the funds. So um, do yourself a favor, um, uh, apply um, on FAFSA before the February 1 priority deadline. Um, you will still be able to apply after the fact, but uh, we do have a tendency to prioritize those that have met the February 1 deadline. Okay, now, uh, in addition to the online application, we do also recommend that a letter of recommendation is submitted to us. Um, who should I ask to write it? Well, we place the greatest emphasis um, on our, your math and science teachers, but so, uh, social sciences and also your college guidance counselor uh, would be very credible. So um, do not ask them the night before it is due because they will not write it for you. Give them ample time and make it easier for them by having a wish list of the items that you want them to focus on. That way it will be in sync with your personal essay that you will be uh, including on your application. So when should you submit that? Well, um, it could be, it doesn't have to be at the time you um, submit your initial online application. You'll be able to add it on later but because the SAT and ACT for this fall 2021 uh, has become optional, we are taking more of a holistic approach to make our decision. So um, the more you provide, the more uh, you tell us about yourself, it will strengthen your application. Okay. Now for the self-mission statement, um, also known as the personal essay or uh, self-essay, uh, this is a two-page statement about yourself. It's a brag sheet um, where you give a chronology about who you are and why did you choose UH Manol? What type of major are you interested in and why? Uh, another thing that we would like to know is upon graduation, uh, what do you plan to use your new newfound knowledge and expertise to contribute back to society? Are you going to stay here? Are you go uh, going to the mainland? Are you going back to um, explore the other parts of the world. We are very interested in that. Okay, so for your um, freshman admissions, um, we do look at your transcripts. Uh, you're going to hear two terms, unofficial and official. Unofficial is anything that is self-professed, anything that you put down on your application. Uh, for example, if it's the, for those of you who are lucky enough to take the SAT, um, you put down the month and the year and the grade which you got. Um, however, that's the unofficial. For the official, you do need to contact the test center and have them uh, send to our office of admissions directly um, what your score was. Now, mind you, this is not like we don't trust you. Uh, this is official protocol. So, um, when you hear um, any requests coming from our Office of Admissions asking for official things, that's basically it. Uh, transcripts, uh, letters of recommendation, uh, test scores, um, that would be a combination of you submitting both unofficial and official, okay? Um, for the competitive GPA, um, the, the pandemic, has uh, really surged our number of applications coming in. So the more you can share about yourself, the, the better it is. Um, for those of you that are taking IB and AP classes, um, we do understand that you won't get your final grades until uh, July, well, June or July. So um, do not panic. We do know about that. Um, I do get uh, panicked. Um, uh, students once in a while say it's way past the deadline and we still haven't received the, the grades. Don't worry about it, we understand. All right, thank you very much, Amber. Okay, thank you. And so just adding on if we have any transfers in the crowd, uh, it's really simple. You'll just need a 24 transferable credits. And if you're a non-resident, it'll be a 2.5 uh, cumulative GPA or 0 0.0 uh, for those who are residents of the state. I know Moto was talking a bit about AP exams, IB exams, uh, so definitely do not worry. We got you guys covered. If you guys uh, are to be accepted and you want to transfer those credits to us, as well as say if you guys have done any running start programs or early start or dual enrollment, there's many names for the official thing. 
Uh, we definitely got you guys covered if you want to transfer your credits to us. I just went ahead and put it in the chat, uh, the different links to be able to view how your specific courses will transfer to us. After students are accepted, it takes approximately one month uh, to evaluate their transfer credit evaluation. Recently, it's been a little bit longer, so definitely just please be patient with us if you are waiting on that. But just make sure to definitely for the transfer students is to make sure to send us in your official transcripts. We don't need it for review uh, for your application, but we do need it to, re to review your transfer credit evaluation. So better turn it in safe than sorry. I personally know USPS has been a little bit slower than normal. They've been busy. Um, much respect to them all. Uh, we're very grateful for them, but definitely keep that in mind. And if you guys can have, do have the option to send any transcripts to us digitally, if your school does provide that for both high school and college, uh, we strongly, strongly encourage sending it to us digitally, much faster and easier for everyone. As far as costs go, I know that's always a really big question is, okay, great, I wanna to come to Manoa, I've applied. Oh gosh, what do I do now? You know, like, how do I pay for this? How does this work? Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and put in the chat, it's gonna be a financing in your future guide, as well as the cost breakdown that you guys are seeing on the screen. So you guys will go ahead and be able to access that, or of course you can go ahead and scan it, uh, the QR code, either way works. So we do have the price breaks down uh, depending on your residency. So we of course have the in-state residency, the WUI, which I'll talk about in a moment, and our non-resident pricing. For the Western Undergraduate Exchange, it is basically, if you are from one of the Western states, uh, please forgive me, I'm gonna try and say them all. It is California, Washington, Oregon, Nevada, Arizona, North Dakota, South Dakota. Oh, I always fail at this part. Montana, Idaho. One day I'll get all of them at once. Uh, I've been trying for literally many sessions one day, uh, but, if you guys are from one of those states, obviously you filed taxes in that state and uh, you're able to prove that. Uh, make sure that on your application that you mark you are from one of those states. And if you are to be accepted, 99.99%, uh, you'll most likely get WUI. Uh, there, it is open for all majors. There's no separate application. So definitely take a peek at that. If you guys have already applied and have any questions about uh, Re the your residency and exactly you know what what does this mean or even if your perspective and you have questions on that uh, all of that is going to be in the chat for links of how to request information about that of course we also do have plenty of scholarships and financial aid available for you it is so important to do that I know uh, on the screen of course you guys will see is our new warrior scholarships that that deadline just passed However, I have great news for you. Uh, we do still have other scholarships coming up. If you guys are prospective, this is just a, a good thing to kind of get to know and be able to prepare for mentally for the future. So I'll go ahead and put the links on the bottom for there. Uh, the STAR scholarships is gonna be due on February 15th. So just a little over two weeks away. Our UH Common Scholarship uh, is gonna be due on March 1st. So we're just a little over a month away from that deadline but plenty of different scholarship opportunities, both between our university and outside the university. Um, our financial aid packages, uh, of course you can apply to FAFSA, like Moto mentioned, as early as October. Uh, the priority deadline for FAFSA is February 1st, coming up in a few days. Uh, so even if you haven't been accepted yet, definitely make sure to go ahead and turn in that FAFSA uh, application is so important. They do do it first come first serve. So the earlier you apply for it, the more likely, to, the more money you're likely to get. So don't procrastinate. This is the one thing you don't wanna procrastinate on, that's for sure. And they, those financial aid packages will start becoming available late February uh, throughout March. So if you're a student that's kind of waiting to see when your financial aid package is coming out, do not worry, nobody has it. Uh, so you're not alone. It'll come out uh, end of February throughout March. So you'll receive an email to your hawaii.edu email saying your financial aid package is ready. Click here to view uh, and you'll just click on it and it'll take you to that. So we are going to go ahead now and transition into a, the Q&A time, our favorite part. We love this part. Uh, so thank you all. I see we have quite a few uh, out uh, questions already submitted, so do not worry. We are not ignoring your questions. We're going to go ahead and get to them now. If you guys still have more questions, by all means, please feel free to keep putting those in the chat, or sorry, 
please keep putting those in the Q&A and not the chat. And we'll be happy to keep answering those questions for you. So we're gonna go ahead and take it uh, just kind of topic by topic. And I'm gonna go ahead and bounce it between Moto and I, Michaela and Lei. I'll let you know, of course, uh, I'll, pull, I'll pull you guys in for that. Uh, but we are gonna go ahead and start off with some questions about the application itself. Uh, so the question says, if we completed our full coursework along with an official transcript, should we still request an official transcript? So Moto, I'll let you go ahead and take this one. Sure. Um, you're able to always uh, check up on the status of your application. Um, like I mentioned earlier, it is very important that you submit both your unofficial and official. So if you are unsure, even after you sending in uh, your so-called official application, um, why don't you email us and, and we'll check up on that for you. Yeah, absolutely. And I put the uh, check application status in uh, the chat as well. So if you want to check on it, definitely let us know. When in doubt, send in the official. I could not agree more with Moto. There's many times where students have not sent it in and then all of a sudden come May, they're checking with us and they're like, oh, did you guys need my transcript? And I'm like, yeah, we asked for it a while ago. <laughs> so definitely don't delay on that. Um, always be sure to keep checking your email, including spam. That's one of the biggest, biggest, biggest tips I have for all students, perspective, pending and accepted. Like, mm -hmm. please check your email. I mentioned it during the last Warrior webinar, but every single year we have students who have gotten accepted for major scholarships. Like we're talking $10,000 plus scholarships. They don't read their email and then they lose it. So please check your, <laughs> I don't want that to happen to you guys. So please always check your email. That's my best advice. And you can always check in with us too. We're here to support you guys. Amber, may I Speaking add of... something else? Oh yeah, Amber? absolutely. Go for it. Okay. Um, now um, there's what we call a provisional acceptance and a final acceptance. So even after you do get an official decision from us, it is important that you follow up um, uh, to, to send in your official final transcript. So that may be something that uh, you will have access to in May of June. Um, make sure that your, your school office your registrar or you can request it from your college guidance counselor to send it into us uh, to our office of admissions because that will be necessary. Great, thank you, Amber. Yes, thanks Moto, appreciate you adding that on. That's definitely even more important. Don't want any holds on your account later on. <laughs> So kind of going into a little bit more about uh, scholarships. I know that's always, of course, a big question for everyone. Um, so yeah, if uh, I see a question that says, if we apply for any of the UH scholarships, uh, when do we get notified if we receive them? So for that situation, uh, for the new Warrior scholarships, they're saying we should be able, uh, start letting students know in March. So definitely just keep checking your emails for that. It can be any time between March to all the way up until May. And that's including all the variety of different scholarships. So even if you get put on like a wait list, uh, it's not a no, it's just a, it could be. So definitely just keep checking that email. And then um, I see a question that asks, uh, do we get reimbursed money if we later on apply for scholarships? Uh, so it kind of just depends exactly what kind of scholarship is, what the timeline is. Um, definitely, if that's the situation, I would encourage you to talk with our financial aid department. They'll definitely be able to let you know more information on that exact because it really just depends on your exact situation. But in certain ways, there is that could be a, a, an opportunity for that. Mm -hmm. Amber, if I may just add for that, um, for those of you that are fortunate enough to get substantial scholarships, um, some of them will have a dollar uh, amount and uh, in parentheses, it will say uh, in the value of. What that means is that you will not physically see the money. Um, the, the value of your scholarship will be subtracted um, from your total cost. So when you um, establish your MyUH account and look into your Star GPS system, uh, it will already be adjusted. So um, I, I do get questions as to, uh, do I need to send in uh, information on, on my bank account routing number and so forth? Um, that is not the way uh, that uh, most of the substantial scholarships are given out. So um, please keep that in mind, everybody. Thank you, Amber. Perfect, thanks so much, Moto, for adding that on. That's definitely so important to think about, those little details. 
All right, so I, I know we're going to go ahead now and transition into a little bit more about academic advising, but you guys are doing great. Keep those questions coming. We are definitely working through them. Uh, so are you able to change? I know we've uh, answered this already, but just to make sure we cover it. Uh, uh, this first student asks, am I able to change my major before the school year starts as a freshman? Yes, absolutely you can. Uh, just make sure to go ahead and submit it uh, by April. Usually they say May, May 1st at like the final, final deadline to go ahead and submit uh, changing your uh, major. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put in the chat, or it's already did it before, but go ahead and uh, you guys will look at the chat. You'll see the manoa.admissions at hawaii.edu email. You can definitely just email that or your admissions counselor, either one works, we'll be happy to assist you with that. Um, and then the next question says, as a transfer student, uh, who should I be talking to on your end as to what general education classes I should be taking? Is there a specific email that you recommend? So Moto, I'm gonna go ahead and pass it off to you and I'll, I'll put some links in the chat. Sure. Um, on the online application platform that I talked about um, at the beginning, um, there will be a application specifically for transfer students. Uh, there's also a checklist that uh, you can review. Um, in order to be categorized as a transfer student, um, you do need to have at least um, 24 transferable credits. Now, um, you may ask, okay, how many um, of my completed uh, credits have, will actually be accepted by uh, UH Manoa? Well, uh, we do have um, transfer specialists that will evaluate your application or I should say your transcript and you will be getting an answer um, afterwards. So um, go ahead and just fill out the transfer application form and um, at a later date, uh, we will identify what your class status is. Um, the completion of IB and AP classes are also important. So if you score high, um, please don't forget to, to add those on uh, in your application. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks, Moto. Appreciate it. So uh, for those who are looking at the chat, I went ahead and added some links about how to find your academic advisor, uh, the bachelor degree program sheets that you can refer to. Uh, I know it's not perfect for every single person, but it gives you just a general basis on that. And also your general education requirements and also our wonderful STAR GPS registration system. So for those students who have already been accepted, uh, it's a great system to be able to reference back to. I know, <laughs> Moto, not to age us both, but I know we didn't have that system back in the day. Michaela and Alay, you guys are very lucky. We're very, very jealous of you both. We had an old school paper catalog that we had to go through and click or <laughs> click through. There was no there was no clicking with the catalog. We had to go through, highlight it. I know I tore out pages and it was, a whole thing 10 years ago plus. Uh, so enjoy the GPS registration. We didn't have that. So we are very, <laughs> it's very convenient. <laughs> yes. All right, so uh, kind of switching into a bit more about our academic departments. Um, I have a student that asked uh, if, uh, something about nursing, if it was affected by COVID. Uh, so it is not. So uh, basically what I was mentioning about nursing is that it is uh, an impacted major as far as Basically, not every single student who applies for your nursing is not going to get directly admitted into the program. Uh, so, for example, um, like we have our high school direct application or direct entry nursing program, uh, where basically you have to apply by the priority deadline of January 5th. You, of course, could have already applied to the university, been accepted into pre nursing. However, just keep in mind that there is going to be an extra application on top of that. It, uh, all of their information is on their nursing website. So I'll make sure to put a, a link to the nursing program. Uh, I'll put it in the chat, but definitely just go ahead and check that out. Same thing for transfers. Uh, there's an extra step for transfers as well. So definitely take a look at that and let our uh, nursing advisors know if you have any questions in regards to that. Mm -hmm. All right, now transitioning into housing. Uh, this is gonna be fun. Students, I might start including you guys in it, but we'll see. <laughs> Um, so the question is, is when does the housing application come out and when does it do? So Moto, I'll go ahead and pass it off to you for this one. Okay, the housing application, which um, I, I think Amber touched on earlier, um, for fall 2021, it, it is going live momentarily. So I would say uh, within the next five business days, um, please watch out for it on their website. Um, 
there, there's nothing sadder than for a student to be accepted and August comes around and they are still on the waiting list. So do yourselves a favor by applying early. Um, if you have questions about specific dormitories, uh, about the meal plans, uh, we are available to answer all of your questions. Um, I myself, um, I um, dormed for six years for my undergrad and graduate school. And those were the six best years of my life. So um, the camaraderie that was established during those years um, are still very um, tight and connected, um, even when um, I am this old. So um, I do encourage you, if you have the opportunity to um, dorm on campus, like um, it was mentioned earlier, even if it's for one year, it does really make a difference. Uh, if you have a choice between going off campus or going on um, staying on campus, um, stay on campus. Um, unless you are a gourmet cook who enjoys uh, dedicating five hours a day prepping for the ingredients, um, having a cafeteria um, that will make you wholesome, balanced uh, nutritional food is fantastic. Uh, just for all you foodies out there, just to let you know, uh, Forbes magazine has um, rated our UH Manoa campus food as the most delicious in the United States. So if you are a foodie, my friends, I will definitely um, encourage you to um, at least uh, enroll in a meal plan. Um, you'll be able to do that um, on campus and off campus students, okay? Thank you. Yeah, always a fan of the meal plan. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks, Moto. Uh, so I see a bunch of questions coming in about specific dorms and how difficult it is to get the residence hall you want. Um, so that's a big thing because it really kind of just depends. Is uh, I know this past year with COVID, uh, we were really fortunate that we were not one of the universities that um, <laughs> my friends work at this university in particular. I won't say names, but uh, where the students moved into the residence halls and then all of a sudden a week, half, week later went by and then they had to move home all of a sudden super stressful for everyone, the staff, students, families, everyone. We made sure that we that was not a thing that we did this year. So basically we still have students on campus even now. Uh, what I define on campus as is living on campus. Our classes are not all in person uh, by any means. I wish they were, we miss you all. We really wanna see everyone in person, especially Mikaela and Le uh, Leigh. I haven't seen you guys in gosh, almost a year now. Um, so, we right now, our classes, I, I'm not mistaken, it's like 85% online, 15% in person. Uh, there's no official plan yet for the fall, so that's definitely still up in the air. Really depends on how naturally the next seven months go. Uh, it really will depend, uh, especially on the vaccine distributions and all of that. Uh, what our goal is to do for fall, and hopefully this all goes well, is to do some sort of hybrid. I can't give any exact estimates of what classes what percentage of our online versus in person. We'll have an answer to that closer to summer, but just know that if everything goes well, we're definitely gonna have in-person class offerings as well as if you would feel safer online, there'll be online options as well. So depending on your preference, we're hoping to have a mixture of both. Don't quote me on that 100%, things can change before then, but that's the goal as of now. Um, with that being said, uh, this year with housing, freshmen did go ahead and they were allowed to live on campus. Uh, the difference of this year versus previous years is this year all of our rooms went to single occupancy. So a little bit different. Uh, the good news is, is you didn't have to pay any more for the single occupancy for this year only. As you got your own private room, which as a freshman and just a college student in general is very rare to have. So that was a really big deal. Um, so we're not too sure how housing is going to handle it for this fall, but that's why we do recommend submitting your application. As soon as you know you want to come to Manoa and you're ready to put that deposit down, your intent to enroll in tuition deposit, go ahead and apply for housing once the application is open. It is, uh, they say it's a first come first serve kind of thing too, but really it's going to be one of those, just make sure you apply. It's going to be so important to apply before that May 1st deadline. Uh, that's going to be the biggest thing for that. Uh, like Moto mentioned, if we've had students who the week before school starts all of a sudden email us being like, I need somewhere to live, but they don't tell us till the week before school. Those kind of situations, we can't guarantee housing. So that's kind of where it gets a little weird at uh, times. Uh, that's the iffy part of it. But 
the actual dorms that you apply for, we can't really say if you're guaranteed to get them or not, especially this year, just because this year, usually we have our forming freshman towers and then we have our upperclassmen housing. This year with everyone being in singles, it was a little bit more mixed up this year. So uh, I don't know what the plans are for fall with that, but if you are a freshman and they go with their traditional style, nine times out of 10, you'll be in the Holly Aloha Towers. Pretty much that's gonna be your spot. If you're an upperclassman, I, McKaylin, I know you lived on campus. Uh, I was gonna say, I'm gonna refer back to McKaylin for this one and Moto too, because you guys both have had those experiences. McKaylin, when you lived on campus, you lived on, did you live on campus your sophomore year? Yeah, I feel like you did, yeah. Uh, did you get your first pick to choice or how did that work for you in a pre-COVID world? Yeah, so the way it works is if you're renewing housing, um, we have to do this thing called like the lottery where we're each given like a number. Um, we have to go into the housing office, they'll give us a sticker with a number. And then based on that number, we get to go fill out our housing contract. And if we're housing with a bunch of different people, so it was me and three other girls, we went with the person with the lowest number. And then so we got to go at that slotted time and we got to fill out our application based on the housing that was available. So I did get my first pick, not necessarily the room that I wanted, but it was on, I got 12th floor freer and I was near the kitchen. So I was happy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's like the best spot right there. I was yeah. like, once you guys are on campus, you'll learn like when you go into your upperclassmen housing, you'll, you'll know the secrets and the strategies. Um, I'll let you guys chat with Michaela and more about that later. <laughs> Um, I see another question asking about uh, the deposit and deposit refundable. Uh, basically the deposit, the initial application is $25. Uh, so you don't have to worry too much about that. Students will get their housing assignment come summer. Uh, so do not stress, it's not gonna be an immediate thing. It'll be anytime between June and August. Well, hopefully not as late as August, but June and July, you'll hear back from us regarding your housing assignment. At that time, when you go to sign your housing contract, it is a $400 deposit. So that's when it's the larger money does come into play. If you do decide to cancel, I've heard they've given up to like, I think $100. It's like $100 is definitely non-refundable, but even that's questionable. So I would really, my biggest recommendation is don't put down the $400 until you are 1000% sure. But uh, that's over summer. Hopefully, you guys should you guys should all know by then what your plan is, and yeah. So don't stress too much about that. We'll we'll have more sessions specifically about housing uh, in our warrior webinars coming up later on uh, as it gets closer this summer. Amber, um, if I may add, um, yeah. every room um, they you you will be allowed to have a compact refrigerator and a microwave oven. Um, as long as you don't have a blazing bonfire in your room, you'll be able to cook um, very simple things um, like uh, instant noodles and so forth. Um, for those of you that are planning to have a potluck with your friends on a Friday or Saturday night, um, like the uh, Hale Aloha Tower Complex, which Amber talked about for the incoming freshman first years, um, we do have a fully equipped kitchen on the top floor. And this holds true for um, most, or I would say all, the other dormitories. Um, you, you do have facilities where uh, you may not want to go to the cafeteria to eat on that particular day. So um, you can uh, whip something up very quickly. All right, thank you. Yeah, perfect, thanks Moto. Ooh, all right, this is gonna be one lay. I'm gonna pull you in for this one, or Michaela, either, either one. Uh, is uh, a student asked, are there jobs offered on campus, such as like different food spots, uh, but not part of work study, just regular jobs? I was like, Leah, I'll let you take this one. <laughs> uh, yes, so there are definitely jobs offered on campus. For example, McKinlan and I were campus tour guides. So you can check out um, our CQ website and their jobs really range from office jobs or just jobs where you're also up and moving like camp as campus tour guides. But unfortunately, because we are virtual right now, we are not doing tours right now, uh, but we do like virtual events like this one. So, or in the future when things get better, I'm still not sure about the plans yet. As Amber mentioned, it's still kind of unofficial, but yeah, you can definitely just check out Seeky and check out all the jobs on the website. Yeah, perfect. Thanks, Leigh. Uh, speaking of, I know we already kind of, uh, 
we'll, we'll bring it up more about, about it later, but uh, we are, we don't do any in campus or uh, in-person campus tours at this time, just because of all the different restrictions, both of the state and our university. However, uh, next week we will be doing a virtual campus tour. Uh, so we're very, very, very excited for that. So I'll give more information at the end about that. Uh, come the summer, we're still not sure about tours. I know they're shooting to start out tours again this fall. So fingers crossed, all goes well. Um, but we are gonna be doing virtual campus tours as well as uh, housing, uh, virtual housing tours too. So we're gonna try to give you guys everything that we can virtually. Uh, we're gonna do our best. If there's anything you guys wanna see, definitely let us know. Email Manoa Admissions. We wanna hear what you guys wanna see. Or even better, we'll have a survey at the end. I'll talk about that later. So we have just a little less than 10 minutes uh, left. So I, uh, I'm gonna answer a couple questions more about student life and then we'll touch back on some admissions and application questions we've received. Uh, so I have a question that says, I heard that students who wanna attend the mixed study abroad event have to, or have to apply one year in advance. If I wanna take part in this opportunity in my sophomore year, uh, do I need to apply now at, or at the end of this year? Um, so Moto, do you want to go ahead and take uh, the question about the uh, Manoa International Exchange? Sure. Uh, for the MIX program, uh, the criteria is for you to successfully complete two semesters with us. Um, once you have that uh, minimum requirement, you'll be able to, to request um, for which country, uh, if there is a specific university that you are interested in, um, the MIX program will help you. So um, like it was mentioned in, in your question, um, contacting the mixed program early um, would be in your favor. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks, Moto, appreciate it. And I went ahead and put that, those links in the chat as well for both study abroad and mix. Um, so this is a fun question. I was like, Michaela or Lay, either one of you guys can take this. Is there an ice rink on campus and is there a recreational hockey league? I was gonna say, I, I know of one off campus that I, it's right next to my house and I love it. <laughs> um, I was like, Michaela, I'll let you take this one if you know the answer. Well, I know we don't have an ice rink on campus, but there is one off campus that um, as Amber mentioned, a lot of people will go to it and that's a chance to get warm and have fun. I'm not entirely sure about recreational hockey. I don't know if our university has that necessarily. Um, I don't know if Amber or Moto, you guys know, or even Lei. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, we don't have an organized uh, ice hockey team, but I do know there are communal uh, leagues that um, you may be able to inquire. In. Yeah, perfect. Thanks, Thanks both. So we're going to go ahead and transition for the last uh, few minutes and back into the admissions questions. As, so the question is, uh, do we get our Hawaii email once we're accepted or do we get one if we apply at all? Uh, so this one, it's technically once you're accepted. I have seen exceptions to that. Um, weirdly, it's not supposed to happen that way, but it does. Uh, so usually it's once you're accepted to the university, you get your hawaii.edu email. Prior to that though, but prior to being accepted, definitely just keep checking that, app, uh, that email that you applied to the university with. That's gonna be the main email that we're gonna contact. Once you have your hawaii.edu email, that's gonna be the email we'll be messaging. So for students who are in, currently in progress, once you're accepted, definitely make sure to put your hawaii.edu email on your phone or on your, you know, wherever you check your email, make sure that you have it logged in constantly. That's at least what I personally do. It, it, it is technically through Gmail, so it's easy to add to pretty much any smart device. All right, so uh, this question right here says, uh, what advice do you give to people who had a bad start to high school that messed up the, their cumulative GPA uh, to make a successful application? Well, so I'm gonna go ahead and hand this one off to you. Sure, um, we understand that we all have a bad day. So um, if you have a very bad semester or even a year, it is quite difficult and challenging to bring that GPA up to something that um, you are happy with. Um, like I mentioned, because we have been turning to a more holistic approach, your supporting documentation, uh, such as uh, your letters of recommendation, um, your, your personal essay, um, these are elements that um, will contribute um, 
to identify and reflect your personality. Uh, we want to know everything about you from were you in student government? Um, do you play musical instrument? Were you a Boy Scout? Were you a Girl Scout? Um, do you volunteer for nonprofit organizations? These are all great things that um, really make who you are. So uh, please let us know. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Moto. Uh, so the next couple questions, uh, one of them states, uh, due to COVID, are we informed about being accepted through email or letter? Great question. So everything this year, unfortunately, does need to be through email, just because we actually are all working remotely as well, as you can see from uh, Caitlin and Lay's, uh, sorry, but Caitlin and Lay's background. Uh, we're all at home right now, but we are working virtually. We are here to support you in every way possible. So we do have like little fun digital swag as well. Uh, we, won't, we won't share too much about that now, but we'll let that be as part of the surprise of the acceptance packet, a digital acceptance packet. Um, so the next question asks, does AP, an AP in arts uh, quali uh, qualified? So I think it means if it transfers to us. Uh, so if you scroll back up through the chat, there's going to be a link that says, I'll go ahead and see if I can repost it, but at AP exams and exactly how they transfer to us. Uh, so definitely check that out. I know each AP class can be a little different on the, exactly the way it transfers to us. And then uh, the next question is, what is the GPA requirement for transfers uh, coming from out of state? Moto, do you mind, mind answering that question for me? Sure. Um, for transfers, um, it is basically 2.5 and above. But again, um, because the, the um, number of applications um, has surged um, since this pandemic, um, it is truly um, in your favor to have the best GPA possible. Okay, so um, there, there isn't really a formula, but I can tell you that the higher the GPA that you have, um, the better it is for you. Now, for those of you that may not be studying in the United States right now, um, you may have a different educational uh, system. We are very well aware of that. So um, please don't convert it. Uh, we have specialists that will convert it to the American 4.0 GPA system, right? So do your best and don't give up until the very best day um, of your graduation. It does all make a difference. Thanks, Amber. Perfect, thanks, Moto. Um, I'm gonna go quickly through the last couple questions and then we'll go ahead and wrap up. Um, so the question asks, uh, what do we pay upfront when enrolling? So if you are accepted to the university, it is gonna be a $200 tuition deposit. Uh, please note that we're not just asking for $200 for fun. Um, it is a deposit. So technically that $200 does go towards your tuition later on. So it's not an extra $200. It's 200 and then you get 200 off later on. So just that's important to note. Um, housing is a $25 application upfront, a $400 deposit once you receive your housing assignment. We do offer um, payment plans. So that is an option if you're a student that needs those payments broken up. I know my family definitely you took advantage of that. So that's uh, what you're interested in doing. So make sure to check your MyUAH account for accepted students. Um, for the, uh, the class of 2022, uh, there's a big question asking if uh, if we will allow to, it to be, if we'll be test optional again for the class of 2022. Uh, being completely honest, we are not 100% sure yet. I know Moto and myself are both rooting, rooting for it. We're hoping for it. Um, we'll definitely have more information for you all shortly. It's uh, currently, it is currently being discussed. So please, by all means, do not stress yourselves out with taking the test right now. Um, most important thing to us as a university is that we keep you all safe. You know, really safety comes first. If, you, if you're able to take it and you are able to do so safely, you can. If not, um, as of right now, don't stress. We'll have more updates about that soon. Amber, that's a great um, point because um, I just wanted to add, um, if there are any parents um, on this uh, webinar today, that um, the UH Manoa is regarded as one of the safest campuses in the United States. And in addition to that, like uh, Amber mentioned, um, our utmost importance is the health and safety um, of your child uh, schooling with us. So um, with the mandatory quarantine that we have as, as a state, um, we do also have a secondary modified quarantine um, that was put into place to assure that 
um, your child is accessing our campus uh, safely. And so um, rest assured, we are doing everything possible um, to make the, the academic experience uh, smooth and, and safe. Um, and that is the reason why we, we cannot really say at this point of whether the SAP or ACP will be optional. It does greatly, um, um, it is affected by the pandemic situation of how we will be uh, six months, one year from now. Thanks. Perfect. Thank you so much, Moto. Definitely safety is such a big deal here. And coming from California, where my hometown was safe, um, not, a, not every near, ever knew my hometown is safe, but it's definitely a very <laughs> safe campus. <laughs> I can assure the parents that too. Um, so we want to, of course, say thank you all so much for coming and joining us here today. We really appreciate all the fantastic questions. Coming up next week, we are very excited. We will have a virtual campus tour uh, by our very own tour guides. Uh, so you might see McKaylin and Leigh again. I'm not sure who, who will be joining us, but uh, you'll definitely get a great view of campus, as well as we do have a transfer Q&A. So any transfer students, we will have one of our transfer admissions advisors is going to be uh, joining us. And definitely those detailed transfer questions, make sure to bring them, we're ready for it. And of course, if you guys are wanting to reference back to any of those links that we put, uh, there's a bunch of links in the chat as well as now on the screen. Uh, you can definitely contact us in numerous different ways. Uh, we have a virtual front desk for admissions as well as financial aid and the registrar's office. We do also offer one-on-one -on -one appointments with your admissions counselors. If you have individual questions, definitely let us know. You can also contact us via email. Uh, and then if you have questions about academic advising or student housing, definitely let those departments know as well. We are here to support you in any way possible. We want to say thank you guys all so much. We hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Stay safe, and we'll definitely be chatting with you all soon. Aloha. Aloha.